You don't see any kind of notes, anything like that. However, if everybody wants to give me a notice check, we will go from there. Yeah, I'm looking for um, ruins and symbols inside these doors. Yeah, there's nothing like that. Like, was back in Dunross? Yeah, there was nothing like that in here. Now, Hello, Mr. As, Binda. Uh, yes, yes. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I, uh, I, I appreciate the help. I, I I'm so glad that these these rats uh, and he's kind of looking around inside of here trying to see if anything is is damaged or whatnot but yes, <laughs> yes. that was uh quite heroic and foolish of you at the same time however thank you uh, oh well it's it's my my pleasure i i uh am just trying to make this right well remember those uh stories that i told you of don ross where the, the runes were inside these doors, scribed the Vistor. Yes, and, I... And inside of your stores. But it, here, there are no runes that I see. No, I, uh, because we don't need any kind of wards or protection here. I, uh, I'm only about a block away. So, And plus, I don't think anything would happen in the city anyway. But I guess apparently that I was wrong. And as he says that... Uh, both Godfrey and Matilda, both of you find several empty vials on the floor as you guys are kind of looking around inside of the inside of the, the facility here. You find about six to eight empty vials that are just kind of thrown on the ground. It shouldn't say podcast in the stream title. I wonder tells. what's in these. It shouldn't shouldn't at all. Do you give it a good smell or sniff or yeah, I gave it a good smell. Yeah, it it smells. It would give me a nature check if you if you don't have nature, then go ahead and give me an unskilled check. What's up, Moon Dog? Good to see you, man. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's pretty pungent. You don't know what the heck it is, but yeah, you're like, whew, this smells pretty bad. I uh, show the party, and I'm like, anybody else have any idea? Yeah, I'm going to take a whiff at it. Or uh, examine these files. All right. You can give me a, a nature check. Oh, awesome, Moondog. <laughs> now all the, all the <laughs> rolls dry buddy. up now. <laughs> Why not? I'll join the party. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for all the follows. How about a survival check? Smart. Anybody else want to get in on the on the action? I yeah, yeah. I'll roll a I'll roll a nature check. Yacht, he got in on it with a one. <laughs> <laughs> I also ask Penda if he knows anything about it. Oh yeah, Penda will say. Oh, I I didn't think you would ask, because he sees everybody over there struggling and kind of scratching their faces and whatnot. But now, Matilda, you've you've actually seen this as Penda is picking up one of the vials, and oh gosh, this smells horrible. You you take a smell of it, and it smells like this is a poison that you've smelt before. It's an ingestive type of poison. That would definitely make one sick and probably end up dying over it. Well, wise elf, have you seen this before? Yeah, I've seen this before. It's a heinous, disgusting substance. Oh, yeah. yeah. It does smell bad. Uh, what to do? Oh, it seems like they've they've poisoned a bunch of the the sacks of flour in here. He says, it, "Oh, it, it's sprinkled in all of the different sacks. This is this is not good." Well, with this flour barricading the door, there must be another entrance. 
Uh, there is in the in the back left hand corner of of the facility. There's there's another door. Yeah, you know, that's where where Jot is going back there. And the door is actually, the door is actually ajar very, very slightly. Yeah. And do you see all this is poison now? All the bags that I'm looking at, it looks like they've emptied uh, quite a few more. And then he's kind of looking between the bags and, and the crates and whatnot. And he's finding finding a lot more of these glass vials. So it looks like most of these bags of flour have been have been poisoned. This is it must Why would it, someone do this? It must be the it must be the man that that I had contact with. That's the only thing that I could think. Kind of a sweet justice. Well, that's that's not going to be good. Well, yeah, now this is this redolent, redolent of, of dried milkweed or nightshade. It's clearly poisonous and toxic in the extreme. Easter, damn their souls! Who would destroy such a the quantity of grain with poison? Oh, well, it's a good thing we found this. Yeah. Can I do a survival or a notice check around the back door to see if the orcs came in this way? Sure. Oh, Dave, I'm going to check mm -hmm. these orc bodies and see if there's anything that leads them to what's happened here. Yeah, you just basically the I think uh, was it Godfrey that did the the once over on the on the bodies. Yeah, the only thing that was found was the ten ten gold shields. Other than that, there's really nothing else that's connecting them to the man that Penda had been in contact with to make him rich, to make him rich, to make him famous. Yes, famous by poisoning a town. Yeah. Yeah. I would say you guys are probably... Look, how long are you guys staying here, by the way? Kind of looking at... Looking through all of the crates and the, the... You know, the bags of flour and whatnot. How long are you guys staying here? Mm, I'd say maybe... 20, 20 minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Looking through everything. Makes sense. Probably, I'd say about 25 to 30% of these bags are, have been affected with the poison. Not all of it. But as you guys spend a little bit of time, you, you're you able to ascertain about, about 25, 30% of the total inventory has been affected. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's good. Then we'll relay that to Penda to make sure that the bad stuff is not distributed. And he is able to continue to feed the city and other surrounding cities with the, the flower that is saved. Yeah, he, he, he says, oh, I've got so much work to do here. I, I need to get to my, my employees over here right away, and we need to go through all of this flower and figure out what is good and what's not and burn all of the bad stuff oh boy this is now it could be a pretty rough winter especially with all of the other flour and dunross that has been destroyed by the rats a lot of people could go hungry this winter it's time to tell everyone it's uh, a good time to start a diet <laughs> yeah right <laughs> seems like there's plenty of rats to eat <laughs> right on. Yeah, and if they need more, there's plenty of meat and done, Ross. <laughs> and cupcakes. Yeah, and cupcakes oh, got ass love as well. Too soon on, on too much meat and done, Ross. Ha <laughs> ha.
So who has the... You guys have a, a map that Rodgar gave you guys as well, right? You guys remember that Rodgar gave you guys a map at the very beginning? Of the region? Mm-hmm, yeah. Did anybody add it to their character sheet? Somebody's got a map. Uh -huh. But Penda, Penda says, I would, I would check to the north. And uh, you can pull out your map. If you have it on you, Mercy, you can see that there's a, a location of, a, of an old ruined tower. This is abandoned tower on the map. And that's the one that added it uh, to their sheet. I think I, I do have it. I also have the red to the ruined ones. I've got a map, but I don't see the tower marked on it. Yeah, I don't see an abandoned tower either. I see the Citadel. Yeah, it's not the the map that I that I share with okay. you guys of the region. No, this is just a a map that Rodgar gave you at the beginning when he was saying, "Ah, oh, there's where you need to go, Dunross, etc." Yeah, I could add a I'll add a little pointer on the map actually. Okay. Me. So, what do you guys think? Well, we definitely need to pursue, and I'm talking to Penda and the rest of the group, and I think we definitely need to pursue this guy. It's clearly, clearly, with with our new evidence now, and firsthand uh, witness, that he is clearly the one that is involved in this. No more speculation. We have to pursue this guy. Yeah, let's tower, go into the mountains. The tower would be probably about about right here-ish or so. If you guys are at Doll Sutter, the the upper pointer would probably be about right here. Where it would say the old abandoned tower. Okay, what time of day is it now? It's uh early afternoon by now because you guys had got here in the morning or so late late morning roughly how long of a journey is it there it would be maybe an hour hour and a half or so a couple hours you guys just want to head there now I'm ready to travel. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so Penda, he says, uh, 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 "You're not going to you're not going to report this to the authorities, are you? I I I, I really feel bad, and I, I'll I'll make this right. I'll I'll see what I can pull together, and and I'll make sure that that I send some provisions to the the outlying areas and whatnot." And just, it's important that you keep this flower and you distribute it and you make this right. Oh, I, I will. I, I will definitely make this right. Can I, I tell if he's kind of lying about it? Uh, yeah, you can give me a you can give me a notice check. Sure. Yeah, you think he's you think he's uh you can tell that he's got fear in his voice because he knows that he could probably get in trouble with the authorities. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, you could tell that he's pretty serious about it. You could just tell in his voice, for sure. All right, adventurers. Heading off to the old abandoned tower. Let's go. All right. Probably take, I'd say, no more than a, probably a couple hours or so. So you guys are going to go tracking the villain now. This tall, skinny, dark-haired man with a, a well-groomed beard. So you guys are making the way to... How well-groomed is it? I Just well-groomed, I guess. As how Penda described it. <laughs> it was a large, bushy beard, but well-maintained. And Enough that someone wouldn't call him a, a neck beard. Yeah, I think. 
I guess it would be sort of like my beard, maybe. <laughs> right? <laughs> so you guys are traveling down the road. What kind of what kind of order are you guys uh, traveling in as well? Let's let's open up the party sheet, and you guys can open up the party sheet on the top right hand corner, and I'll I'll put everybody's tokens here on the third tab. There's the order tab. And why don't you guys put on what kind of order you guys? Well, have? I'm definitely going to be in the back because I like looking at hot or, or hot dwarf butt. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'll stand for the mercy then. <laughs> I <laughs> uh, love it. Well, I do have the arrogant hindrance. What's up, Arv? Thanks for the host, man. Holy shit, which, which is up forward or what? What's going on? He's got the hindrance. Well, he says he's got arrogance. Which I think would work. So we got, see, we got Fargus and Mercy and then Jot. Oh, looks like uh, Mercy's going to the back. Yeah, I'm going to be in the back. <laughs> I'm wearing toilet paper for armor. Taz says, you like that rumble booty. That's it. From the dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> the rumble booty, that's it. <laughs> the rumble booty. Oh, gosh. All right. Looks like we've got a pretty good marching order there. Yeah, make sure the checks on Godfrey's butt. Yep. <laughs> well, the dwarves are getting nailed with uh, the women all over them. Holy crap. It's crazy because I have the attractive perk, you know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> God. I'm making you look good. I've got the ugly hindrance and a minus four charisma. They all look the same. Good. They all look the same from the back. It's well tuned. I'm not really going to need for a shop for it. <laughs> all right. So you guys are traveling down the road. And as you're traveling, it's actually quite, I guess it's very nice and quiet. It's uneventful. It's a nice day outside. Nice, cool temperature. Clouds are overhead. You can see the, the mountains off in the distance as you're traveling towards them. And probably about 100 yards ahead of you, you can see that there is a, a plume of smoke that's coming over the, the low tree line that is ahead of you. Maybe it doesn't look like it's... Uh, it doesn't look like it's a like a, a billowing, raging forest fire or anything like that, but it just looks like it's a, a small little plume of smoke. Maybe for all of you, uh, maybe for you guys out there, that would be one with nature. Maybe a, a campfire or something like that. Because remember, you have been told by Penda that there's no one that really lives out here, and it's just this old abandoned tower. But that plume of smoke is off about about 100 yards or so, 100, 150 yards. Do we notice any tracks at all while we're approaching? Give me a... I you could probably give me a uh, tracking check if you have tracking. If not, unskilled. Everybody with all these unskilled. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Unskilled. That's the highest unskilled I've ever seen. Uh, I, I, think, I think you're right. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> Fargus. It's Fargus, all the compliments you can... on my butt. Feeling <laughs> <laughs> inspired. It, it's motivated him, huh? So as you're going down the road with your awesome triple raise roll, you actually see that there are some 
tracks from a horse and also wheels of a wagon also. And that's they that's Fargus. Yeah, you're you're not really too sure which way it's going to or from, but you know that there's tracks going that way in the direction. You don't know if it's if they were coming towards you or or moving away from you, but you're able to follow them though. You're able to actually track them with an unskilled tracking check, which is nice. But the tracks are going the same direction. That's that small little plume of smoke coming over the tree line. It's coming from that direction. I so just keep following them towards the smoke. Yeah, okay. and let's be quiet. Okay. So, you adventurers, you start to hear some clattering ahead. And as you turn... As you make a turn on the trail, there's sort of like a like a small opening. And you can see that there's like a little ruined wall. And you can actually see a small camp. And you can see the wagon up ahead. That, the wagon's probably about about 40 yards or so from from where you guys are at. And it kind of kind of startles you because you see a lone figure, and then you can hear also hear a a horse that's slightly kind of neighing as well. And you can see that there's a lone figure that's wrapped from head to toe in a traveling cloak, and it looks like uh, this person, this cloaked figure, is stowing some belongings into a backpack and also kind of banging a couple of pots together and you can see that there's also a small campfire and she's as she kind of she was kind of like squatted down or he or squat was squatted down and the figure stands up and starts to kick some dirt and some soil onto the the remains of what's left of the campfire and i'm going to show you guys a map now and this is what you guys see. And this is a great map by Zelvia. Oh my god, that's awesome. It's, it's like it was made by God or something. I know. <laughs> so you guys can see a wagon about probably about 20, 30 yards from you as you turn the corner. Uh, you can also see this, this figure. And the figure s turns around as the person kind of hears you guys walking up. And as you guys are moving up, she pulls the, the cowl down over her head. And Fargus, you're instantly in love because this is a, a woman in her mid-30s and she's unattractive, uh, got scars all over her face and whatnot. <laughs> Much like you, Fargus. <laughs> and, <laughs> what a blow, huh? Oh. So she looks towards all of you and she says, Oh, hello. Uh, my name is Odd. Uh, I'm an herbalist. Are you looking for any kind of remedies or anything like that? Uh, I'm Odd. Odd Hawk's daughter. Well met. I'm a traveling herbalist. What can I do oh, you for? The merciful daughter of Ira immediately steps ahead and asks for Ira. Her. Ira, huh? That's ah. right. What do you have in the way of herbs? I am very curious. I'm just a traveler, and I had just been stopping here to see if there's been anything in the area that I could actually scrounge up, and I was just making a, a couple of remedies myself. It seems like the the potions take when the herbs are fresh. So that's why I kind of stop, and I'm, you know, I'm just a, a wandering herbalist. I'm are you very... looking for anything? I very carelessly step right up to her. Oh. Could I see what you have? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, I'll take you over to my wagon. Uh, I've got most of my goods over there. And you can actually see, sticking out of her pack, because she hasn't... You know, you guys kind of walked up on her, right? 
So she doesn't have everything put away, but you can see that she does have like an alchemy kit. And she's got some uh, vials and stuff that, that has some liquids in it. That's kind of jutting out of the out of the backpack. The vials look like the vials of poison from the flower. Uh, you can you can give me a, a notice check at minus two because you're quite a bit of ways away from her. So put a minus two in the modifier box. And in Vey, you can also give me a a notice check also. And, and in the tower, or the chat. Yeah, you can throw it in the ch- yeah you can throw that in the tower. Wow. Oops. Wow, crazy. So she she says, yeah, just follow me over to my wagon. And she comes over to a horse, and her horse was kind of tied up around, you know, the, the leathery strap was tied around the bush. So she gets her strap, and she leads the horse over to her That's wagon. It's a fine horse. It, it is. I've, <laughs> I've had her for quite a few years. And she, she leads, you know, of course, the horse is part of the map, and I can't move the horse, but... Well, isn't that a beautiful Zovia map? Gosh, you can get this on her Patreon page. Wow, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so she says, what are you looking for? She says, I have quite a, quite a bit of merchandise that's already ready to go. If you're looking for anything in particular, I may have it. Yeah, and I she, give her a, um, an arbitrary list of things that I'm looking for. <laughs> She's got whatever you're looking for, pretty much. I I make the trade and immediately start chomping on whatever she gives me. <laughs> Jot says, and that's right. This part of today's adventure programming is brought to you by Zovia's Maps. <laughs> yeah, she takes you to the back of the wagon. She's got actually quite a bit of stuff. She's got all these wooden racks and stuff, and she climbs up inside and... and uh, she says, uh, that'll be, that'll be two gold shields for what you need. And that's, that's a pretty good bargain, actually. I had it over without hesitation. Okay. She says, oh, thank you. She hands you a, you know, a couple of weeks worth of, uh, of a bundle of stuff that you're looking for. And she says, is there anything else? You guys have any kind of, uh, of herbs or anything that, uh, you might either dried or maybe extracted into any kind of uh, magic that you're looking for? I am in no rush. I, I am in no rush at all. I've got nothing but time. I, I step away from the group and kind of settle down by the campfire over here and continue to, to enjoy my herbs that I've recently purchased. Mm. She says, so what? Well, so. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, could I find out like more about her with like my charisma? Uh, sure. You can give me a a charisma roll. You can give her persuasion. Oh, nice. This is uh, I'm I'm uh, really going nowhere in particular. I'm just, you know, just uh, would appreciate some company though. If you guys would like to maybe escort me to the the nearest city, I I don't know. Uh, I'm just a uh, I'm just an herbalist. I just a little herbalist. I I don't know if I could really defend myself. It, it seems like all of you are are battle hardened adventurers. What are you doing? All all of you are doing out here. Mercy, mercy. I see you bought some herbs from the from the cleric to Ira. Can you tell me uh, what might be a good thing for me to purchase? Probably know more than I do about what he has to sell. <laughs> I don't even look up. I'm just chowing away at my herbs. I ask if uh, she could possibly identify like the poison and whether she's familiar with it. She takes a look at it and she gets out a little like a little alchemist kit she adds a little bit of like a couple of different fluids into it shakes it up and it starts to foam up a little bit and she says oh this is 
quite toxic, actually. If, if this is ingested, you'll die within the week. Where did you find this? Someone with great skill in hedge magic has made this. Where did you find this? Back in Dolcetter with Pedna's flower storage. In Dolcetter? Hmm. What's going on in Dolcetter? We found six or seven vials of poison in amongst his flower storage and now about 35% of his storage is gone and poisoned. Ooh, that is, uh, that's unfortunate. And you said this was, this is in Dolcetter, huh? Boy, somebody wants to make Dolcetter have a bad winter and winter's coming up in the next couple of months or so. That's unfortunate. I uh, I ask her if she has any like cure for this poison, like anti poison. I mean, you can use an antidote, but to gener generate enough antidotes, that's that's the challenge. Any poison can be counteracted. It's just finding enough of the actual ingredients to make all of these these antitoxins. That's the trick to it. And if you're wondering, no, I do not have enough antitoxin to go around the entire uh, town of Dalsutter. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to pay her for her work there to try to cure the flower. Yeah, Dalsutter's Dahl got about a population of about 300 or so. So, well, yeah. you did say you had nothing but time. <laughs> You could go back and start. Uh, I did say that, didn't I? You did. Hmm. I did uh, say excuse that. Me. And you wanted an escort back to a town, and that's the closest. Well, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, yes. With the, with the wonderful herbs and such. Yes. What is yeah, your name, I, by the way? You said Mercy? No, I am the merciful daughter of Ira. Hmm. Ira, huh? Well, I'll, that's a short version. I will give you more, but I'm really interested in the the strange the the purple bees that are urinating on the heads of dancing children over there next to the the fireplace or the the campfire. So I thought I'd come over here and ask you some other questions instead. She she just kind of chuckles at you, Mercy, and she says, "Wow, those took effect quite quickly on you." <laughs> She just kind of chuckles. Wait, what's the what? The what? Oh, anyway, I noticed <laughs> that you have a symbol of Hydra on you and thought maybe I would let you know that I am also one of the merciful daughters of Hydra myself. Oh, she just The great of... healer, the outstretched dancer of peace walker of worlds. Oh, Either you. Eater of food, drinker of drinks, taker of herbs. <laughs> maybe you've heard of me. <laughs> I have not heard of you, unfortunately. Drinker of drinks, oh, knower of knowledge, <laughs> grace of Sigil's hearth. So you saw my small little wooden symbol of of Ira, and she pulls it out and she says, "Yes, I, uh, I, I do have a symbol of 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 Ira. It is it is my holy symbol." And she just kind of shrugs her shoulder and she says, "I I'm uh, I'm a healer of sorts." You know, it, it does make sense to honor the patron of healers, but I don't do it with magic. I do it with herbs. Indeed. Herbs are quite healing. <laughs> yes, they are. By the way, I have to compliment to you on your army of fae that are surrounding your wagon. They're be quite beautiful. Yes, they're, they're, my, they're my loyal minions. She says, how many do you see around here, by the way? Oh, hundreds, at least. I can't count them all. They're beautiful. <laughs> I, I, unfortunately, I do not see them. You must see something that, uh, the, that I'm not seeing. Uh, sister, maybe you should, you should try some more of these herbs yourself. 
No, I, I just request usually and brew them. Not a, <laughs> I can I can actually see that. No, I I just I just collect them, I dry them, I sell them when I need to, and then I I usually use my hedge magic skills to concoct potions. That's how I worship Ira. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Fargus? Fargus! Why are we here? Yeah, what are you doing here, she says. What was it? We were looking for some guy. A bearded guy in all black. Came yeah, that's here. it. Hmm, a bearded guy in all black? I haven't seen him. Is he some kind of bad guy? Is he in with all of these creatures that's surrounding my wagon? Oh, no, no, no. No, those creatures are beautiful things. Uh, this, this guy, he brings rats. Have you seen any rats, actually? Rats? No, I've... No, well, I mean, I've... Of course, I've, I I see rats. rats from time to time, but nothing giants or anything. Yeah, yeah, Yacht, he knows exactly why we're here. Right, Yacht? Don't you know why we're here? What's that guy's name? Who are we looking for? What's that guy? <laughs> Yacht knows. Ask the Yacht. Yacht's wandered off. Where is this Yacht? Where has Yacht gone to? You've been wandering around the map this whole time. Hmm. Yeah, I went to Godfrey and Matilda. Look, who are we looking for? We're looking for some guy, right? Yes, we're looking for a, a bearded man. Tell this lady with all the fae around her that uh, that we're not, looking for this thing with the man. Not do I see any fae? Because I actually speak fae, which is weird. No, you don't see any fay actually. Odd said, boy, that kind of narrows it down, Sister of Mercy. A man with a beard in black. That narrows it down to about 50% of the population around here, I think. And she kind of ch just... chuckles and she's piddling around in her wagon again. Yes. I, I asked Godfrey how old he is in fay because I also speak fay. I tell him twenty-eight. <laughs> I'm telling Godfrey I'm but a woman of sixteen, newly uh, christened as an adult in the world of Rasselar. Okay. How about? <laughs> how about? First of all. Godfrey, you might want to step a little more to the left because I think you're about to step on. There you, there you go. You're about to hit one of those fake creatures. Anyway, yeah, I don't want to do that. No. And, um, worshiper of Ira Lady, we are looking for. <laughs> what did you say? There was as a, a guy with his beard. So you, you don't see anyone come this way. I have not seen anyone. This is actually a pretty nice area to find to find herbs for, for my remedies. That's why I'm out here. Have you been out here long? Eh, a couple of days or so. Like I said, I'm I'm just a wanderer. I travel from region to region and that's about what I do. So what are you doing out here? You've never told me just that you're looking for a bearded man. I mean, there has to be some reason why you're looking for this guy. It, something about rats and stuff? I mean, what what is he? Is he some type of Pied Piper? Oh, if only. Yes. yes. Uh, have you heard of the, the city of Dunross? Uh, yes, I've I've done some dealings there, yes, with the, with the temple. Yeah, you probably won't be doing any dealings with them for a while now, because most of them are dead. Thanks to this guy. Dead? From from what? Disease? Uh, this poison rats. that you're showing Giant me? Giant rats. Oh my goodness. Giant rats the size of dogs. Well, that's, that's not good. 
So everybody give me a notice check really quickly. I was going to ask if, um, mm -hmm. if, um, if I noticed anything strange about this lady. Uh, you can give me a, you can give me a notice check. If you, if you would like. Dave, should I give a notice check? Cause I'm not right there. Uh, whereabouts are you? Let me see on the map. Yeah. You're way off on the <laughs> side. <Yeah. laughs> what are you out there taking a leak a behind? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Taking a deuce back there behind the bush or something? Are you bushwhacking it back there? Because mercy's been watching your butt the whole time. What's been going on out there, Jot? Yeah. Can I take a peek in her wagon too? Sure. Yeah, she's got oh. all kinds of stuff in there. <laughs> can I take personal. a Can I take a look inside of her box of her in, in her wagon? <laughs> take it to dinner first. Yeah, you, I, I tell her. I was going to say I, I tell her that there's there's definitely room for two in this wagon. Uh, there definitely is. And can I help you with something? Is there something that you're looking for? And, and when you look inside of this, when you look inside of the wagon, Godfrey, you see all kinds of uh, like these leathery straps that are hanging from the, the canopy. <laughs> and uh, they've got herbs drying on them. Not the leathery straps oh, oh. that Mercy's hoping for. But no. <laughs> I was going to roll initiative on that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you, you don't see any anything uh, out of place just a bunch of alchemy stuff like like she has said and, and some also some some traveling gear and in fact i will say this you notice that there's more than one one backpack there's multiple backpacks multiple bedrolls etc i asked her if she was traveling with anyone else no, just just me, myself, and I. Just the the wandering uh, herbalist. Just call me odd, though. Not odd as an ODD, but odd as an AUD. I've been made of, made fun of in the pa of the past. Um. So where are you heading, odd? Uh, nowhere in particular. I, I, I was thinking about maybe going back to, to Oslov and maybe seeing if uh, any of the merchants there would need any wares. I've been out for, haven't been there in, in a couple of months or so. I may, I may stop by Dunross, see if there's anything that I may be able to lend a hand with there. Uh, this, seeing that it's gone through this Armageddon that you speak of. I may Nobody's stop by. There. They've all moved on to Aslov. Oh, have have they? Oh, that's unfortunate. Rats, huh? Boy, that, those things carry disease. Dave, I want to per, I want to persuade her to tell me everything she knows about this person that we're looking for. Can I help her? I'm going to do cooperation on help. Sure. Yeah. If if you want to help her, Matilda, give me a a persuasion check. And if you're not if you do not have persuasion, then you cannot help. Okay, so we'll say with your roll, uh, you had a, a a plus one to go with that. So we'll say that you had a 16 mercy. And she says, well, why are you trying to press matters with me? I'm just... I'm just a, a merchant that's trying to sell herbs. I, I do not know this this man that you speak of that has rats and is involved with all of these shady things going on. I, I have no clue what you're talking about. And she seems to actually be getting a little frustrated. And at this point, uh, Yacht, behind you, all of a sudden these little tiny portals are opening up behind you and they have this sound of almost like a electricity type of cackle and it looks like small little radiance or light yellow portals opening and these creatures are jumping out of them and it seems like in like a counterclockwise circle around the entire 
you know, area where you guys are at, these things are popping out. And there's quite a few. So why don't we go ahead and roll initiative? And you guys are, are surrounded. And odd, she says, what, what is this? What are, what are you trying to do to me? What are all of you trying to do to me? I, I'm, I'm, I've done nothing to any of you. And then all of these things, these winged creatures, these leathery winged creatures, they all come out of these portals and the portals disappear behind them. So let's go ahead and draw some cards for initiatives, shall we? <laughs> this is a bunch, isn't, isn't it? That's a bunch that of stuff. That is a lot wow. of things. Yeah, <laughs> that's quite a bit. Now, why don't you... Mercy doesn't even notice this because she's just tripping. Yeah. Mercy, why don't you give me a give me a religion check? A Ira check. All right. So we've got a, a fury here. This fury makes a beeline. Right for odd. So this say I'm gonna do a uh, I'm gonna use the action to dash so i'm going to get to go an extra square wow that's not good so it's going to go one two three four five six seven squares there and this thing is small it's about the size, a little bit larger than a dog it's it's flying in the air it has leathery skin very sharp claws big fangs and it's not quite too odd so we're going to go to another couple of these as this mercy sees this thing and it's not quite in not quite faced by it you notice this i will say this mercy you notice this as a, they're called a fury. And multiples are called, it's a furies. So, you, yeah, this has to do with something. And, and I'll, I'll tell you in just a second in a tell. But this fury moves up to Matilda. And this thing slashes out. It's going to try to claw you. And it hits with a four versus your parry. So you're unharmed. It's only done three damage to you. But your toughness mitigates it. We're going to go to another fury as it comes out from behind the bush. It also engages you, Matilda. And it too claw tries to claw you. Oh, and it hits you. Not quite a raise, which you are very lucky. Wait, and the what's going on there? The damage that you take is going to be seven. So you are going to be shaken, Matilda. So if you would like to use a Benny, you can use one of your four Bennies now and get rid of shaken. You would just pick up a Benny off of your sheet and then just put it onto your character sheet and get rid of the shaken effect because a box will will show up around the shaken condition. Okay, so you've got three bennies left. And now, Lady Matilda, it's your turn. I, I, yeah, I grab my weapon and I really I need to defend myself at the danger. Uh, I use my, my bow at close range and I'm just going to try to shoot that uh, fury in the face with an arrow. Uh, you know? Okay, so you are going to be attacking the parry. So I believe you hold down control and then drop the attack on, or it might be shift or alt. So let's experiment with this because I can't yeah, remember what the, because the attack is. Because if you're in melee range, yeah, it's, against their, it's against their parry instead of against four. Yeah. 
So it may or may not work out for you. So try holding down control and then dropping or try, try shift.